cities like Baltimore, Philly, Chicago, um, et cetera, they're seeing a huge rise in homicides. I mean, we're talking like, like upwards of 800% in some cities, like crazy numbers that are reminiscent of 1992, 1993. Now, you and I lived in LA in 1992 and 93, so we, we remember how crazy it was, um, not necessarily with us, but just around us. But um, why do you think we're going backward in that regard? I was just watching an interview the other day on television. On, on Facebook, a guy had an interview. He was an interview with a news reporter. He said he was there when some white guys dropped off uh, a Nike bag full of guns and told the brothers in the community, go protect yourself, okay? I remember back in the 90s, there was a train, door left open, trains just sitting there. Guns full of guns. Mm. They forgot the bullets though. So somebody dropped off a van full of bullets a few weeks later. What? So, dude, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not telling you something that, that I heard, okay? I'm telling you what I've experienced. So when you put people in that position, no money, uh, I'm not gonna make no excuses for it, no money, but it's like you provide them with the tools to self-destruct and that's what they do. That's what they do. You know, they, they can find a reason because now, just like some of them cops, these guys now got bigger hearts because they got a nine millimeter in their hand. The same guy wouldn't, wouldn't be willing to pull the trigger if he had to stand there and go face to face with somebody because he could hop in the back of a car, shoot out the window and keep going. Okay? He might, he'll do something he, not, he might normally wouldn't do. Same thing with some of these cops. If they didn't have a gun or a badge, they might be some of the nicest guys you met because I got this gun and this badge and I got this, 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 this blue wall around me. I can be an asshole and, and have backup, have a lawyer, okay? So, and then second of all, man, every place you talked about, I might get in trouble for this one right here though. Every place you talked about is in the Midwest. The Midwest is a hotbed for white supremacists. I'm not saying this is the case, but if you got a tornado and the tornado was busting out windows, and all of a sudden you decide to bust out some extra windows because it's a tornado going, a whole lot more windows can get busted out and get blamed on the tornado. You follow, you follow what I'm saying? If you, if right you follow, with you. okay, and sometimes, mm -hmm. man, you know, it just it just amazes me how why all of a sudden do we have an eight hundred percent increase in in uh, gang violence in these cities? Well, these cities are surrounded by cities that ain't black. Chicago is in Illinois. Illinois is known for having uh, being a hotbed for racial violence. I mean, uh, uh, white supremacy. Okay. That ain't, it ain't all, the whole city is not Chicago. Chicago itself is a racist city and in, in, in been a racist city forever. So if things are, if you already got some, if you already got a problem with, with certain so-and-so, we can add to the problem and nobody would think, nobody would think different of it. Just like with these, so like, the puppet, uh, some sort of puppet master behind the scenes. Maybe. Puppet masters, yeah. agitators, yeah. When you see, when you see, well, that, uh, huh? That goes along the lines of how I feel about everyone that's getting arrested at these protests and these and these protests that are behind Black Lives Matter, and it's all white people. Yeah, it's all white people burning. These things. Yeah. it's literally all white people burning this stuff down. It's not. No. I have not. You can lose any time. It's all white people. Right. So you got you got people saying they're on your side, but they're making you look horrible in the eyes of the public. Okay, mm -hmm. they make you look horrible in the eyes of the public, and then when a few brothers do run into a Target or a store to do some stuff, that becomes the front line news. Okay, it was I just read the, I, I do a lot. I follow this very very closely, man. And I read an article, and this was the sheriff who thought yeah, the sheriff. Hold on, Lonzo. Hold on, hold on. One second. I'm good. We'll wrap this up in a bit. Go back. Go back like this. Man, I'm sorry. We hit another snag, and it okay. just—I didn't hear anything you said. I read an article, and it was a sheriff, and he, he, read, he, he arrested like a hundred some people 
at a so-called Black Lives Matter show, um, protest, but 85 people in the, of the 100 some people arrested was white and out of town, from out of town. Okay? Exactly. It was white and from out of town. So you got, you know, mm -hmm. and here's something that people don't understand, man. Being a political junkie like I am, when you get to be old, you start following politics because that's instead that, that, of gang life, because it's the same bullshit. It's just high level bullshit. Um, yeah. If this stuff continues at this rate, okay, if you keep having cops getting shot, you keep having protests, uh, it, it, it could be considered anarchy. If we have anarchy, Donald Trump can, can declare uh, martial law. Mm -hmm. Martial law Thank you. Will, I told you. will suspend will yeah. suspend the goddamn election. If he think he's gonna lose, okay, so if you Thank out there, you. if you got enough people reacting, black or white, okay, people reacting to whatever is going out these streets, um, if he decides to call martial law, that's the one time that the election can be suspended, held, uh, uh, can be held off, whatever the case may be, okay. So, especially if you, you know, you see all these white faces coming in to help. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, help. I, I appreciate the help, okay? Help me at the ballot box, okay? <laughs> help me at the ballot box. I don't need you to give me no bricks. I don't need you to ride on the walls. I don't need you fucking with these police because they come to my house. You're going back home, okay? You're going back yep. home. You're going to do your dirt and go back home. I got to live with these police, okay? Me and my folks got to one got to ride down the street and at these at these with these big ass black asses on, staying staying your ass and like you were at the, out, out, like out, out last night. I don't live far. I live right down the street from that uh, from the protest been going on for the last past ten days for uh, my man that got shot on 100 ninth. Okay, I can hear the helicopter. I'm, I'm so close to it. I can hear the helicopter. I can hear the smoke bombs going off, okay? I can smell the, the smoke and some of the tear gas as it dissipates and the wind blows it towards my house, okay? If I'm outside, I can smell, it's, it's, it's very pugnant, okay? It's a very pugnant smell. And this, I, I noticed that last, not this, not this Saturday, but last Saturday, helicopters were flying everywhere, man. It was helicopters all over, about three or four of them. And I kept hearing this boom, 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 boom. It wasn't a gunshot, wasn't fireworks, huh. and then the next morning, I, I, I went outside. You could, God damn, what's that funky smell? And I written, then I watched the news, and they were saying right there on Normandy and Imperial, where the sheriff station is, they had a big protest, and they used uh, crowd dispersing, uh, non-lethal weapons, and some rubber bullets, uh -huh. flashbangs, tear gas, all the stuff was in the air, and um, you know, so a few people were arrested. And the few people I saw that got arrested was white. 